Technology and our ideas of privacy have evolved together for a long time. Part of the reason for that is technology is not only involved in protecting us and protecting our ability to remain private, but also frequently represents an intrusion, a new tool for governments or uh, other entities to violate uh, our privacy and to learn things about us that we don't want them to know. The relationship between privacy and technology goes back a long time. Um, and probably my favorite example of the evolution of our ideas of privacy caused by technology is a pair of Supreme Court cases separated by 39 years that had to do with warrantless wiretapping. So what is wiretapping? Wiretapping, you know, remember, these cases are both pre-internet. Uh, the first one is in 1928, so people are starting to have telephones. And the question is, can the government, without a warrant, now with the warrant, the government can do many different things, but without a warrant, without probable cause, can the government listen to your telephone conversations? Now, what does that require? Well, it really, you might not notice this at all. I mean, that's kind of the nice thing about a wiretap is, you know, you've probably seen these in the movies. You know, people or bad guys are talking on the phone and, you know, there's someone in a truck outside the house. And today, you would, back in 1928, you wouldn't even need that because they wouldn't be talking on a cell phone. You would just talk to the um, telephone company and say, hey, I want you to listen in to eavesdrop. I would have, a, you know, a, a police officer at the telephone company that would be in the middle of all your calls. So you're talking on the phone. Uh, you think you're having a private conversation and somebody sitting there listening. So the Supreme Court in the United States first took up this case in 1928. And both of these cases rested on an interpretation of the Fourth Amendment um, of the US Constitution, which is part of the Bill of Rights. So the Fourth Amendment reads, the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated. The question was, what constitutes an unreasonable search? When the Constitution was written, here's what an unreasonable search meant. You've probably seen this on television. The cops come to your house, they, tear, you know, they bang down the door, and they go through everything. They go through every drawer, they uh, you know, pull up the carpet, they look in the ceiling, they look everywhere. And with a warrant, to some degree, they can do that. Once they have probable cause, they can come into your house and they can look through all sorts of stuff. But that's what an unreasonable search meant you know, in the 1700s. Um, 19, but, but the question is, what does an unreasonable search mean in the modern day where I don't have to you know, cause you any disruption? In 1928, the, court, the US Supreme Court ruled that wiretapping was okay without a warrant. Why? because I don't have to bother you. I don't have to disrupt your life. I don't have to bang down your door. I'm not gonna break anything or cause a mess. I just am sitting there quietly listening to your phone conversations. No problem. And so it's really interesting because in this particular court, which was you know, considered, I think, now to not necessarily be the best court that we've ever put together, uh, but their interpretation of the Constitution was that this was okay because it did not constitute an unreasonable search. Fast forward 39 years, obviously in 1967, we've seen lots of different technologies, uh, phones are widespread, and the case comes up again in a different, in a different case, different court, uh, much more forward thinking, and this time, uh, the verdict is no. And this is sort of considered to be the modern and, and more correct interpretation of this particular part of the Constitution. But what we're starting to see here in the evolution of the 39 years between these cases is this idea of a right to privacy that has nothing to do with you bothering me. It has nothing to do with you causing me problems and you know, uh, creating a mess and sort of imposing. The unreasonable part of the search has to do with you finding out things about me that you should not be able to know. Now, I can still do wiretaps with a warrant, no problem, um, but the government in the United States is no longer allowed to eavesdrop on your conversations without some reason to think that you're involved in something bad. So I need a warrant, I need to show probable cause, then I can get a wiretap. Um, 39 years, two different courts, same question, same fundamental documents. They're looking at the same constitution, the writing is not different, um, and we're seeing the evolution of a right to privacy caused by changes in technology.